Welcome to the Home Business Podcast with Richard Captain Henderson, publisher of Home Business Magazine, and Sherilyn Colleen, managing editor. This how-to show helps you successfully operate your home-based business. Greetings and welcome to the Home Business Podcast. I'm Richard Captain Henderson, your skipper at Home Business TV. Hey, I'm Lynn, your co-host. Let's go for seeing it in a way we love business startup stories on the Home Business Podcast. The COVID-19 crisis is leading to new bursts of ingenuity as entrepreneurs develop new products and services to adapt to a new stay-at-home world. To curb the cost and hassle of the new rush to buy home exercise equipment, Emily Fukunaga has created a weightlifting device that makes Campbell's Soup the center of your workout. Enter her Make Weight, a do-it-yourself dumbbell device that firmly holds food cans, fashioning a custom weight that's adaptable to your curling and pressing ability. Emily has a fast startup story that provides lessons learned, including with Kickstarter, on quickly getting your product to market. So hello, Emily Fukunaga. Welcome to the Home Business Podcast. Hey, good to be with you, with you guys. So you're, uh, you're calling in from Baltimore. Yep, exactly. Baltimore, cool. Maryland. Well, I want to see this, uh, this cool product of yours. Can you, can you uh, show that to us? And uh, put, so All right. Wow. Go. And... Uh, so you put some cans into it then? And exactly. So you just... We're, we're like, this has become an infomercial here. All right. <laughs> this is perfect. And, and you screw the, the levers and you clasp the can in place, one on each side. Wow. That so is cool. Whatever fits your workout. How did you ever think of this? <laughs> So like many of you that are listening, um, I was stuck at home in COVID and I did not pre-plan and I didn't have weights at home. So I was doing workouts without weights. I was um, jumping jacks, push-ups, sit-ups, um, tried to get work some weights in and found a 12 pack of Diet Coke that I started doing squats with. So that's kind of- Or you just like grab the Diet Coke and start working out with the cans. <laughs> I tried, yeah. It got a little heavy, um, so I realized maybe something more like a tomato can was more in my wheelhouse. Um, mm -hmm. So I looked at my pantry and I thought, wow, I have all these cans. This would be great, but you can't hold two in one hand, and um, I kind of struggled. So I thought, what if I created a handle, essentially, so that I could hold a couple of different weights and still do the weights, weight workouts that I was used to before COVID? Oh, so you just then... Um kind of built it up around the idea, um, you know, how to form the, you know, form the plastic and, you know, the actual mechanical design of it and, and took it from there. You, you, must, you must have like, you know, had some people you worked with to help with like the, the mechanical design or anything or? Yeah. So I don't have a technical background. Um, so I realized what I needed very quickly um, was a CAD designer and someone with a home 3D printer because uh, all of the shops with 3D printers are closed right now. Um, so I went on, you know, those platforms like Upwork and Fiverr um, and mm -hmm. I found some great partners uh, to work with me and I shared with them my specifications, um, kind of what I had as my vision. And they helped me with the back end to create some great CAD designs. And then um, someone actually printed um this prototype so uh, i want to stop people i want to stop you right there so people understand that this was actually produced from a 3d printer your prototype yep exactly um and someone's home prototype and they mailed it to me and that's kind of how i've built um so far this business you know that's that's amazing to, to you know 10 years ago you couldn't have done this kind of outreach and found you know this kind of talent but just by searching through it through Upwork and other online places that, you know, manage talent, you were able to search out and find somebody probably pretty quick that homed right in on what you needed. Exactly. Exactly. Well, let's learn a little bit more about you. You've uh, worked your product development around a day job in the retail industry and understand you have an MBA, a, one of those feared MBAs from the Columbia Business School. Yeah, so um, my day job, um, I'm a management consultant. Um, I focus on the retail space. Um, you know, I've had 15 years of retail experience, um, kind of on shop floors and strategy buying. Um, and now um, after getting my MBA at Columbia, um, I transitioned into management consulting. So basically helping um, anywhere from Fortune 50, Fortune 500 companies, um, all the way down to mom and pops, kind of 
helping figure them out, figure out their branding, their pricing, um, supply chains, everything to do with retail and, and customer engagement. Well, that's, uh, you got a great story where, you know, you start off with something traditional and professional and then, you know, move into something that's, that's more entrepreneurial and builds on your skills. And now it looks like even, it's even transitioned into an interesting startup. Yeah. So, so Emily, where, where are you at now with your product launch? I know that you've developed your prototype, but what are the next steps? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I've been in touch with a couple of different um, prototyping shops that can do mass prototyping um, on a larger scale or very low production runs. Um, and I um, have launched on Kickstarter. So that's very exciting. And I've raised thousands of dollars there. Um, and, and the idea is that that will help me create the initial run for the initial set of inventory. Um, there's some um, not to get too technical, but there are some hurdles that need to be um, mm -hmm. hit in terms of the molds for plastic pieces or metal pieces. So um, I've been working with these shops to kind of estimate um, what my initial investment is to get that initial run out to get this uh, make weight out to, into the world. So I think kind of the big picture here is it's not really cost effective to do 3D printing for a mass run. You know, you've got to go into molds and and I'll, and I'll be able to do a larger scale of production runs that'll be cost effective then. Exactly. And, um, you know, I would love to get this into the hands of everyone for under $30. I know that um, with small apartments and small budgets, it's not easy to get a huge set of weights, um, even mm -hmm. when they aren't, you know, overpriced or, or out of stock. Oh, the um, prices and I heard are just, I mean, crazy. When this all hit, I started talking to some of my friends at the gym and what are you doing? And they were, they were investing thousands of dollars into, you know, home work at, you know, uh, home gyms. I mean, they're expensive. Absolutely. So um, one of these, um, so a, a pair of these, which is, I think, essentially what anyone could need um, is um, under $30 to $29. Um, and it's actually very, very cheap to ship because it comes in at under a pound, um, under half a pound, so um, a piece. So I think you know, compared to the traditional weights that folks are buying, um, I think this is a great alternative. So kind of, you know, you come up with a big picture, you get it going, but now that you're, you know, moving into production and sales, you've got to start kind of really tearing things apart, analyzing everything, looking at all the different steps to getting the product into people's hands and marketing it and, 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 then, and then building from there. I guess it requires kind of a different focus from, you know, big picture prototype development to, you know, having a product, you know, getting, you know, potentially millions of these into people's hands. Absolutely. So I think it's, um, I'm definitely going to leverage all of my partners in production. Um, you know, I, I want to work with a, someone who can help me scale. So, you know, understanding that, the first folks need to have the best product they possibly can, um, but I'm not going to make thousands of them in the first run, probably. Um, but I do want to get to a point where I can be making 10,000 of these a year and or, or more, um, because I think, you know, once people have the opportunity to buy them and, um, you know, in this new in this new normal, I hate to say, um, I think right, right. that it, it's a it's a good thing to have on the market. And I think there there will be a lot of traction. I got a big question for you. Why aren't you on Shark Tank? <laughs> I could just see you on Shark Tank with that. <laughs> I absolutely would love to be. I think that that may be something that I aim for um, once I get a little bit further along and get some mm -hmm. actual production. Um, once I have a few thousand units out there and I get some real customer feedback and some real loyal um, folks following the brand and, and following me, I would love to explore other opportunities for bigger investment. Yeah, what I see, you know, danger I see here, it's such a it's such a great product, but you know, people coming in and copywriting and you know, copying it, things like that. So yeah, that's what you know, you get a whole nother big big product problems at that point. And uh you just gotta kinda take them as they as they come along. Well you you have gotten out ahead on fundraising. Can you talk with us a little bit more about your use of Kickstarter? Yeah, absolutely. So um I thought Kickstarter was a great platform to kind of get um, the word out there and get some initial thoughts and, and feedback for the product. Um, I also thought it was good to be able to kind of reach out to friends and family in a way that is a little bit harder when you're just doing private fundraising. Um, mm -hmm. The platform on Kickstarter really encourages you to um, ask 
ask for contributions, either with or without um, a product. And when they pre-order a product, they feel like they're getting something, even though it's not equity. Um, I think at this stage and at any stage for a startup, the most expensive thing that you can give away is equity, even though you know it feels right. cheap at the beginning. Um, so I would say, you know, that was one of my favorite things about Kickstarter is that you can really get some good fundraising done, but um, you know, you don't have to give away a piece of your. But you're still anymore. keeping you. You're still choosing the amount of ownership you have. Exactly. Fundraising. Exactly. So Emily, you have many options for marketing a low cost product like MakeWeight. Can we learn a little bit about your marketing methods such as online and social media practices? Absolutely. So, um, so far I'm doing a lot of um, word of mouth. Um, I've asked friends to help me post and, and share the links to my page. Um, I think that I'm also gonna continue on social media. Um, a lot of Instagram, Facebook, um, short, uh, short low fidelity video advertisements. Um, and then, you know, I think some media outlets like yourselves have, have kind of picked up on this and said, hey, I think this is maybe a sustainable business and, and a product that people really want and need out there. So um, hopefully continue, continue on that path. Um, it seems yeah. like this would be perfect for Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it, easy putting it out in a visual and then people see how, what we see in it, that it, it it's so cool and unique. And then, and then you just, it gets viral. People start sharing it. Absolutely. And I mean, it's, look, it's not a serious product. We don't want to take ourselves too seriously right. with the make. Well, that's what's good about it. I mean, that's what's good about it. So I think, you know, it's, it, it actually leads itself to content that people want to watch, which I think, it, <laughs> like you said, that's what happens. You know, that's what brings things viral. Yeah. I think all you need is Kim Kardashian with a workout <laughs> and, you know, we're, and uh, yeah, this is something that could really, um, really take off virally. So uh, that, that's always the best thing. If you can do word of mouth by investing, having to invest in marketing, do more word of mouth. Um, that's always the best way to go. But, you know, at low cost and broad appeal, you have a product that could skyrocket into, you know, millions of in sales. Are you ready? Are you ready to handle the growth? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I will take any challenge that comes my way. Um, again, I don't have a technical background, but you know, I was able to get something 3D printed. I was able to get something essentially prototype ready and, and ready for market. So um, I'm so ready for that challenge. <laughs> that yeah, but you it. showed you were able to work with the technical people and get the right product out. And that, I think that's what's important as an entrepreneur. Yeah, thank you. Emily Fukunaga, you have a great entrepreneur startup story with MakeWeight. Do you have any final points or pieces of advice you'd like to share for others who are looking to start a business? Yeah, um, I think right now it's a really hard time. And, you know, being stuck at home is it's never easy. Um, I know that there's a lot of stressors, obviously, for a lot of folks beyond being just stuck at home. Um, but it's also a really good time to reflect on what you're good at or what you're passionate about or excited about. And for me, I love the idea of making use with, of what you have in any situation, right? Like I love capacity, like utilizing the capacity around us and, and making the most of what we have at home. So this kind of just felt really natural to me and it kind of, it was organic. Um, it was something I needed. And then it, I realized it was something that friends and family needed. Um, and then it, it kind of went from there. So I would just encourage everyone that's stuck at home and maybe has a little bit of extra time on their hands to just spend some time thinking about what they're passionate about. And if they're trying to start a business, I mean, now's a great time there. You, there's so you can really focus. Um, and I think there is, there are still people that are willing to back you. Um, I think there are Kickstarters that are getting funded every day. Um, and, you know, friends and family who, you know, who, if you have a product that friends and family want, they are definitely going to want to support you. And I've, I've seen so much of that in my experience. What better way to start a product with Campbell's Soup? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Emily Puganaga, thank you for being such a great guest on the Home Business Podcast. Great. Thank you so much, guys. Really great, have, great being here. It's been wonderful. Thank you. To learn more about Emily Fukunaga and her MakeWay product, please visit her page on kickstarter.com or our podcast website for more information on guests. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Home Business Podcast. Share your feedback with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our website, homebusinessmag.com. Visit the website for information on advertising. Subscribe to our newsletter. Please visit our sponsors. For more information, visit homebusinessmag.com or the expo at homebusinessexpo.com. I'm Richard Kevin Anderson saying anchors away. We'll talk with you soon. Until then. Make it a great home-based biz day.